Did you know that Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, and the Joker from the Batman animated series, was once the voice of Wolverine from the X-Men? In the video game tie-in to Bryan Singer's X2 film, called Wolverine's Revenge, released in 2003, Mark voiced a CG representation of the live-action Wolverine famously portrayed by Hugh Jackman. In fact, his face was even on the cover of the game, despite not being involved. Funnily enough, though, this Wolverine played by Hamill even got to interact with Professor X, played by his live-action actor, Patrick Stewart, carrying over from the movie. I get the picture. It's gonna be a big help. Your estimates are wrong. Scott and Jean will fly you as far as Edmonton in the Blackbird. A bush pilot will take you the rest of the way. Patrick Stewart has in fact voiced Professor X in both Wolverine's Revenge and X-Men The Official Game, the X-Men Legend series, and even X-Men Next Dimension, once obtaining the role of Charles Xavier in the live-action film series. In fact, a couple of the actors from the films reprised their respective mutants in X-Men The Official Game, such as Sean Ashmore on Iceman, Alan Cumming on Nightcrawler, and yes, even Hugh Jackman himself as Wolverine. Jackman also played Logan during the tie-in game for X-Men Origins Wolverine, where, ironically, he faced off against a CG representation of Deadpool, with Steve Bloom matching for Ryan Reynolds. Steve Bloom would of course go on to be the definitive voice of Wolverine for nearly all major video games, animated films, and TV series. He says that rock is special. He says it came from the sky. Alright, the bottom line is, the Sentinels can now find every mutant left on the planet. So if we don't stop them tonight, will be extinct by tomorrow. Long before Steve Bloom became the de facto Logan, many older fans might also remember when the badass Canadian anti-hero was played by actual Canadian actors. Just after the release of the first live-action movie in 2000 was X-Men Evolution, where he was played by fan favorite Scott McNeil. Tonight, we're the world's last, best hope to stop this madman. So we're gonna trash those pyramids any way we can. This series featured an all-star cast of Vancouver voice actors, from a host of cartoons like Beast Wars and G.I. Joe, and anime like Inuyasha and many of the Gundam series. Some notable ones include David Kay as Professor X, matching Patrick Stewart's performance to tie in with the movie. We are prepared for what the future brings. I know this because I have glimpsed it in the mind of Apocalypse. A young Scott Summer, Cyclops, originally cast to Brian Drummond, but eventually replaced by Kirby Moore. Mystique's back, but the Brotherhood's helping us? And now the Institute suddenly goes into DEFCON 4? There's something very wrong here. And Jean Grey, played by Venus Turso, who would many years later get to reprise the role on Iron Man Armored Adventures. Scott and I are your instructors now! At least Bobby is paying attention! Along with Dale Wilson, who played Principal Edward Kelly in X-Men Evolution, returning to play Senator Robert Kelly in Iron Man Armored Adventures. Look, all I'm saying is you can't have a beef with just one of them because they stick together. I'm just concerned for your safety. And special guest Christopher Judge of Stargate SG-1 fame voicing Magneto. This is between higher evolutionaries, and I guarantee you, only one of us will survive. Ironically, despite much of the filming for the X-Men movies being done in Vancouver, the production chose to not touch any of the cartoon actors with, according to Scott McNeil, a 10-foot pole. However, one Vancouver voice actress did get to appear for a brief cameo as a young girl trapped in a car, Rana O'Brien, who folks might remember from Inuyasha as Rin. Production for later X-Men and many other Marvel series eventually moved over to California, where new casts were cycled around and re-auditioned for many shows, games, and movies. However, the X-Men franchise did have a small comeback in Canada many years later, under a new and totally different medium. In 2009, a series of motion comics based on the Astonishing X-Men series written by Joss Whedon and illustrated by John Cassidy were recorded at Edge Studios, using the actual comics for visual reference. This cast included a host of New York-based actors, some of which you might recognize from Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, the Sonic the Hedgehog games, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. However, after the end of the Astonishing X-Men's first run of motion comics, the production moved to Vancouver and the new cast was made up of many actors that were previously in the X-Men Evolution series. But since the New York cast had established their own unique voices for the X-Men characters, the actors were rearranged in order to match the voices already set for the first season. Some examples include Dan Green being replaced on Colossus by not Michael Adamwaite, but Trevor Duvall, who played Pyro in Evolution. Gargabi being replaced on Cyclops by not Kirby Morrow or Brian Drummond, but Mark Hildreth, who played Angel in Evolution, and also Quicksilver in the Wolverine and the X-Men series, both prior to the Astonishing Motion comics. Meanwhile, Brian Drummond finally got a big piece of the X-Men pie, taking on a Wolverine from Mark Thompson. And the most bizarre one, Beast, previously played by Mike Pollock, was replaced not by Michael Kobsa, but Ron Halder, who not only played Mesmero in X-Men Evolution, but also prior to the motion comic played both Magneto and Charles Xavier in Iron Man Armored Adventures. The iron in your blood is unique, like a fingerprint. Once I'm close, I can track you like a lion tracks a gazelle. Hello, Miss Claremont. 
My name is Professor Charles Xavier, and I run a certain institute I believe you've been looking for. Long before all of this, of course, many old school fans fondly remember the original X-Men the Animated Series. This show was recorded in Canada, but rather in Toronto instead of Vancouver. A few of the actors heard in this series also carried over to voice their characters in the popular Marvel video games developed in the 90s by Capcom including Cal Dodd as Wolverine, Tony Daniels as Gambit, Lenore Zan as Rogue, Norm Spencer as Cyclops, Rick Bennett as Juggernaut, Don Franks as Sabretooth, and Len Donchev as Omega Red. Some other actors from the cast of the X-Men series took on other roles, such as George Buza, Beast, taking on Colossus, and Catherine Disher, Jean Grey, taking on Storm and Psylocke. The 90s series was the first full-fledged TV show based on the X-Men franchise, but before that, there was another animated series that almost materialized, but only a single pilot episode was produced. This potential series, called Pride of the X-Men, named after Kitty Pride, aka Shadowcat, featured a whole host of even more old-school voice actors like Kath Zussi as Shadowcat, Earl Bowen as Magneto, Michael Bell as Cyclops, John Stevenson as Professor X, and even Frank Welker as Toad. Hell, the man himself, Stan Lee, even narrated the opening to this pilot episode. Welcome, this is Stan Lee of Marvel Comics warning you to look around you, your classmates, your friends, you never know which one of them may be a mutant. In the late 80s, Marvel Productions, a film studio subsidiary of Marvel Entertainment, also produced a single season of a Robocop animated series starring Dan Hennessy as the title character, who ironically also voiced the Sentinels in the Capcom-produced Marvel games. The budget that would have been used to create the 13th episode of the Robot cartoon season was instead used to produce the Pride of the X-Men pilot, through Toei Animation, the company responsible for the Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon animated series. However, shortly after this pilot was delivered, Marvel started having financial issues and had to halt many animated series they were producing through SFE Films, and the continuity of Marvel Comics-based shows eventually ended. This line of series that went all the way through the 80s included the Fantastic Four, The Incredible Hulk, and three Spider-Man series, one of which, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, featured an appearance by, you guessed it, the X-Men, several of which had their very first voices. In this episode, as well as the Pride of the X-Men pilot, Wolverine was played by Neil Ross, who would later go on to play a ton of G.I. Joe and Transformers characters, as well as many other Marvel characters like Fin Fang Foom, Howard Stark, Doctor Doom, Super Scroll, Green Goblin, and Crossfire. Funnily enough, as Wolverine would be played by Australian-born actors like Hugh Jackman and Scott McNeil doing a Canadian character, this version of Logan had an Australian accent. Welcome her! Wait, she's not drawn in the X-Men, is she? She's just a kid! Thanks for watching. This video was inspired by Did You Know Gaming, so go check out their channel and watch all their videos about gaming trivia. Special thanks to Omadon for the audio mastering, The Legend of Renegade for the music, BehindTheVoiceActors.com for all the audio samples, and Motley Fool for all the insightful comic book info. If you like this video, go check out some of her other ones. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more. See you next time.